All right, so we got a newly finished product here. Uh, it's a, one of our first school buses for a, a customer. So, uh, you know, she named it Ivan. So let's take a tour. All right, this is a uh, 2007 Freightliner school bus. It is a little bit shorter, uh, which is just right for the young lady that is going to be using this at kind of like a little travel travel around, see some of her patients, and uh, uh, get to see this lovely country. So we put a, uh, a commercial uh, steel door on it. It does have an RV window. I'm gonna apologize for the, you know, it's not the, the cleanest build, right, or the cleanest right now because we took it down the road and uh, just to check for squeaks and it's raining and it's kinda nasty, so. Pardon the water drips and a little bit of road dust. But uh, the lady wanted a wood stove put in it, so we added a, uh, it's got a cubic, cubic mini grizzly, I believe that's which one we put in here. Uh, I didn't like the way the, the exhaust was running out with what come with it, so I built a fully stainless steel three inch exhaust. Uh, you know that they would use on your regular car we added a marine style cap on it uh, we uh, silicone lined the entire roof before we added a custom roof rack with uh, 1250 watts of solar and then we also added a uh, rooftop deck that the customer wanted down here she wanted to kind of look like a woody wagon so we had uh, two sign guys out of Jasper. Uh, they did all the vinyl decaling to kind of, uh, you know, make it look like she wanted. Uh, you know, there's your, your water fill. We did have to reroute the exhaust. One, it was kind of uh, rusted and rotted pretty good. So uh, for the, the tanks and everything, that was the best place right here right in front of the wheel to reroute it. Uh, between that tank, or between the exhaust and the door, is a 75 gallon freshwater tank. And then, it's got a 75 gallon uh, freshwater tank. Uh, we also put uh, brand new tires all the way around on it. And uh, new brakes, uh, new brake rotors in the front, uh, they were, they wasn't bad, but uh, they were warped pretty good. Uh, so we went ahead and put all new calipers on it and brake pads and uh, ABS sensors. Back here at the back where the exhaust used to run out, come straight out the back next to the fuel tank is a uh, 30 gallon black water tank. It does have an RV style toilet in it, so it does have a black water tank. On the back here, you can see where we hung the uh, 12K Mr. Cool Mini Split that does run off of the uh, battery bank that's on the inside. Uh, we'll show you what we can of it here in a minute. We did have to completely reskin this entire bus. Uh, it was rusted out pretty bad. Uh, so rather than try to patch it with factory panels, we pulled everything off. Uh, I'll throw a couple pictures of what that looked like here. Whole new uh, 18 gauge sheet metal on it. Right here is our uh, gray water tank. It has a uh, 40 gallon, sorry, 45 gallon uh, gray water tank for the shower and the sink. It has a drain there. That handle there is the drain for the black water valve on the other side. And then as we get over here, there's the gray water valve and then your uh, your RV hose hookup. Or, you know, if you're just doing gray water in a lot of these places, you can just let it run on the ground. So we put a cap on there that you could hook a, uh, a garden hose to. That kind of, you know, makes the people that, you know, that it, they don't really know, uh, you know, what you're doing. It's just gray water. You're not dumping your black water, so... If you have a garden hose, you know, they tend to not freak out near as bad. Again, uh, all new tires all the way around. 
we put a uh, undermount uh, LP tank in here. That is a 30 pound tank. Uh, yes, unfortunately you do have to go somewhere to have that filled. It is a permanent mount. So as we come around, uh, the owner is the one that, uh, that chose the, the purple. It's a, um, I believe it's called Morning Glory. So that's our nice little tour around here. Uh, one thing we did upgrade to, um, it was kind of a safety thing because, you know, these, the old headlights are, they were horrible. So for $120, these are LED lights. These are the same ones I have in my personal van and I absolutely love them. You can see they're not too bright that they're blinding people. They're just a nice all around light. So that's what we put on, on this for her. As we come around here to the, to the entry door, uh, she didn't want to have to mess with keys all the time. So we added a uh, touch pad uh, lock on there. So as we enter, So this, uh, as we enter here, you can see we, we lined all this again. I know people are thinking that's the only thing I work with is cherry, but uh, you know when customers come in and they see us working with it, they really like the, the color and the texture and the grain of all the cherry. So they tend to go with that a lot. So the window we put in the door itself, uh, again, this was a solid door, we cut that in is an RV style window that does have a screen. It does open uh, so you can be able to set in the, the nice new plush seat that we put in there and you don't have that big giant uh, uh, blind spot. Uh, I do see people every now and then that will put a solid door and try to drive around. Um, you know, if that's all you can get and all you can find to put in there, okay. Uh, I do not recommend it. That is a giant dangerous blind spot that kind of makes you unsafe to be on the road. Personal opinion, you know, you know what they're saying is about opinions. Uh, we did reuse the, uh, the factory bus handrail, which worked out perfect. Uh, again, as you come into the, sh the door here, you know, she wanted a place for some shoe storage or whatnot. So we got a couple little compartments here. Uh, we put uh, river uh, river stone polished floors throughout the whole bus. It is insulated underneath of it. She wanted a spot, or she wanted a stereo so if she could, uh, you know, listen to her podcasts or whatever. Uh, I wish I could have put it more into the living area, but with a bus this short and as much as you know, she wanted to put in, cram in here. Um, which just worked out to a nice little area and if she ever wanted to upgrade later and add speakers to the outside this does have it is a dual zone uh, head unit so you know as we can come around here you can kind of get a, a feel for the layout this seat I actually bought for my own personal bus um, hers was shot uh, and you know I have time so I just went ahead and uh, installed this in here for her. I think she'll definitely uh, definitely enjoy that whenever she sets in it. It's it's a little more plush than my recliner at home. So we did put a, uh, a rear view camera. It's mounted right underneath the bottom of the outside AC unit. So that gives her a, a pretty good little uh, view of the back of the bus, kind of like a rear view mirror. I know some people mount them up high to act as a rear view mirror, but, uh, you know, that, that was a nice place. And, you know, if you put a, a window screen on here, then you have to worry, you know, where do you mount it? She's a little bit shorter of a lady, so she would be looking way up all the time. So we uh, just decided to mount it over there. We also added like a, a reading light kind of like a dome light in here 
that is uh, operated off one of the control panel switches down here. And both, uh, both of the fans are still working. Uh, they work off the switches up, up on the dash there. And we also have a nice little, little storage compartment here. Uh, right now I've got all of her paperwork, some of her, uh, you know, PPE and everything. Uh, first aid kit, her fire, her, uh, road flares, triangles are down there in that little spot out of the way. Um, up front up here is where I mounted the, uh, the head unit for the mini split. Uh, unfortunately, the way this bus is designed, you know, in order to be able to get to the windshield wiper motors, you have to be able to get into that compartment. So this whole panel here where the, the head unit is mounted, uh, if you slide, slide this over just a little bit, there's three bolts right there and that whole thing will swing out of the way so a mechanic can get in there to work on the wiper motors or whatever if they need, ever need to. As we come around here, I added another little uh, little storage compartment, you know, for little knick-knack stuff, uh, kind of utilizing all the space we could. Uh, right above the door, you know, it's an odd shape, but it's it's six, seven inches deep. It's not real tall, but either way, it, it works out nice. Let's get a view of the back of the bus here. So, you know, looking from the front to the back, so you can see we ran the uh, stone flooring throughout the whole bus, except for the very back area back here that has a rubber mat. She's got some stuff she plans on storing underneath of there. I figured it would be a lot less likely for it to slide around. There is a, a two inch aluminum lip right there underneath the cargo area again to try to stop anything from sliding forward so here is her uh, her grizzly uh, I, initially i wanted to mount it with the door facing you know toward the center of the bus uh, for easier access but she wanted to be able as she was sitting at the, the dinette seating area to be able to see it but by facing it straight back it would have made it very awkward with the way the the hinges were on the stove to put wood in so we settled at a 45 degree angle there and yes it is a little close to the cushion but you know this isn't a stove that you're stocking full of wood late at night and letting it roar trying to heat 6,000 square feet you know it's more of a ambiance heat and actually I've got a little fire going in it right now but as you can see just for a little reassurance being that we use a uh, stove pipe or um, exhaust tubing instead of you know just regular uh, double wall that that is supplied with the stove I went ahead and put a, a three inch band clamp around it uh, the stove is bolted down so it is not going to go anywhere uh, instead of just hanging on the wall which we don't have the option for with this layout uh, it does have a uh, double insulated uh, section that goes through the roof and out to the silicone boot outside and with uh, two and a half inches of clearance all the way around that to the wood I also added some more uh, uh, fiberglass uh, fireproof proof, uh, insulation between it and the wood as well just to, for a little added reassurance. Uh, she did choose to keep all of the factory windows in here. We pulled all of them out and uh, uh, resealed them all so you know unlike most buses that have the dreaded leaks hopefully we can stop all of that. Uh, she wanted a rather uh, a large refrigerator and for the same price or actually cheaper you know versus the ones that were bigger than the dorm fridges but smaller than a residential so we uh, we went with a full-size residential refrigerator um, being you know we end up using a residential stove uh, so it didn't stick out much farther and it was actually cheaper uh, brand new refrigerator new stove I mean, big freezer 
That's actually bigger than what I have in my house. Uh, in behind this this little panel here, um, just because it's out of the way and it's not like it's something that you know you need to access all the time. Her um, Wii Boost and everything is all in behind that. Uh, as we come around here, you can see the the full five burner uh, gas stove, full size oven. Uh, she said she loves to cook, so I'm sure she'll be putting this to good use. And then right here on the side is our sea uh, level monitoring system. You know, it's got your, your battery levels, fresh water, gray water is empty, black water is empty, your pump, and then for the uh, under cabinet lighting, we just added that switch in there as well. Uh, she wanted the countertops originally we when we discussed this project uh she wanted all of the epoxy done in uh purple uh but then she thought that might you know kind of clash and everything with with the outside so she wanted it to look more like a, a flowing water river style so we did the, the metallic blue again here the uh the you know, with not having walls to put the plugins in, we added them into the countertop. You know, when they're not using, they're down and out of the way. Pop up. That one's got dual USB as well. Uh, we also added some storage between the counter and the window. Same with down through here. Uh, this emergency exit is still fully functional. I'll flip the handle up, window will go out. And then as we get over here, you know, we still have another little one there that she could put uh, some kind of jars or something in to put um, some of her bigger silverware or, uh, you know, your cooking utensils in. Now these, uh, these pull knobs uh, she had ordered. Uh, so that's what we installed. They're not the, not the greatest quality. I like the look of them. But uh, uh, it's a good thing she bought two sets because we've had some issues with them already. You know, she's got four nice deep. Uh, this one's a, a 24 full extension. This one here is just a 20 because of the, the way we had to build the cabinets in the back. Another 24 full extension and then your bottom one's a little bit deeper. Alright, so under the... Uh, under the sink here, there's your Bosch uh, four and a half gallon electric water heater. Uh, it's just plenty good enough to to take a shower. You know, it may take a little bit longer to for your if you're doing a whole family, but this is a single setup more for a single person than than a full family. Uh, seeing how that is electric, and uh, you know. You don't want to let it run all the time. We added a switch right there so it's easy access to turn on and off, you know, as needed. It's got a real deep stainless steel sink. You know, faucet. Uh, it also has a little basket and stuff that you got to go in here, you know, to catch any food debris. Uh, she did not want the, uh, she wanted the sink accessible. Uh, she didn't want to have to mess with, uh, you know, the, the cutting board that normally gets put over top of it. Uh, just because, uh, you know, sometimes they can be a little, a little pain to, uh, to move it around and find a place to put it and everything. So she opted just to have a surface mount sink. If you come around here, we have a, uh, 24 by 32 uh, RV shower pan that we put in here corrugated metal for all the surround you know, around the the kitchen area and the shower nice little shower head uh, I like that one so much because it's it's more of a water saver style but you still get a lot of coverage I actually put one of them in my own camper and then as we come around here to the uh, 
to the toilet area. Again, this the door and everything we built for this project. Uh, it has a, a magnet to hold the door open so whenever you're taking your shower, you know, whenever you step out, you can put your uh, your towel or whatever on the back of the door. You, you know, you're not trying to do everything in the shower itself. Uh, the toilet area here, you know, if it's just, you know, you and someone else is traveling with you, which I think she said her son's going to travel with her a little bit, you know, you've got a private area to use the restroom if needed. So back here in the twin size bed area, again, this is a very short bus. Um, we have a pretty good little storage area at the foot of the bed. We have a storage area, you know, above, you know, being how that's only a twin bed, uh, it didn't make sense to build a cabinet back there because, you know, you'd have to climb up on the bed anyway, uh, especially with the factory air, the rear air on this bus that does work. So that's why we left it. Uh, you know, it would have made it a pain to try to get back into that little corner. So we just put a shelf there. The same with on this other side over here. And then, you know, your lights and stuff for, for this room is all here. With a, a plug-in and a couple USB and a USC uh, right there. So again, this is a, a pretty small bus and we've crammed a lot of stuff in here. So, uh, you know, this may not be for everyone. I actually kind of like it quite a bit, but I'm a little biased because, you know, we built it. So the electrical, let's go around and open the back door and we'll, we'll look at the electrical system. So as we open the back door right here up underneath of the, the air conditioner, you can see the rear view camera. And then, you know, you have a pretty good size uh, uh, storage area up underneath here. I know it's a little dark. But it's uh, about five and a half feet you know side to side and it's uh 40 inches deep so you know you can store quite a bit of stuff in here i think she's got some equipment that she's going to be taking with her on this uh, journey around the country uh right here we have a uh, main battery disconnect uh behind this panel is four 270 amp hour uh, game changer batteries uh there's also a uh, DC to DC 30 amp charge controller, uh, you know, to be able to charge the batteries while driving. There is also a 85 150 Victron solar charge controller and a uh, 3000 watt 50 amp service uh, inverter. Uh, here we have a uh, your main 12 volt breaker and then your, your uh, breaker for your solar panels, and then a traditional uh, RV breaker box, use box. For servicing, and, and that's something I wanna talk about too, is when you're building your system, you know, most people worry about making it look pretty. You need to worry about making it accessible. I've had a, uh, a van in here that was uh, built in an uh, outfit out in California, looked great. But in order to get to the batteries, you had to dismantle the entire back of the van uh, in order to be able to access it in any way. Uh, we spent four hours just trying to disconnect one wire off the top of the battery before we finally just had to disassemble the whole van. Uh, so make your system accessible. You will thank yourself, others will thank you later. To access everything behind this, we've got four screws right here. This panel will slide to the side or slide completely out. We can get to the inverter, the batteries, everything. Uh, this system it does have a vent. Uh, it draws air from under the bus. And this whole area is vented out the roof underneath of the deck up top. So it gets enough air in order to be able to stay cool. And there's also a, uh, a heater in there. Yes, it's an electric heater, uh, a heating pad 
that uh, batteries are sitting on so in cold weather she can turn that on and uh, uh, be able to make sure the batteries don't drop below uh, below freezing and then back here is our uh, you know 50 amp uh, shore hookup so I believe that is everything on this bus um, this bus was here way too long uh, due to some personnel issues we had here for a little while uh, we no longer have them so that is not an issue so you know if this is uh, something that you would like to uh, inquire about you know us building you a bus or even do it in partial uh, you know please uh, don't hesitate to just an email emails are preferred uh, it does take me a little bit to get back because it's just me and I've got two employees uh, I quickly realized that uh, trying to keep a full staff and booking everything is too much for one person and you know, we can't really get anybody to work these days but that's for a whole other discussion in another video but uh, feel free to email us at info at Red's Custom Design uh, for a full build, partial build, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you're interested in, uh, just, you know, please keep in mind that, uh, this is a business. So, you know, trying to do a full bus like this for 10 grand and having someone else do it all, it's not gonna happen. Uh, so if you're open-minded and realistic to, on your, your goal, and your budget, please feel free to hit us up. Uh, again, we are located in English, Indiana. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I do have a TikTok account, but uh, I haven't put anything up there yet. So you can follow us there or, uh, of course, here on Facebook. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.